Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this uh, Tuesday's edition of Alaska Weather, 26th day of October 2021. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, hosting today's show. And up first, we've got uh, no watches, warnings, or advisories out for the state anywhere north, Arctic coast, central interior, south central Alaska, Panhandle, or the Aleutians or Bering Sea, all advisory watch and warning free. So from there, just moving on to uh, satellite imagery, low pressure uh, west of the Queen Charlotte Islands and another week or a little farther to the northwest south of the eastern North Gulf Coast. That continues to circulate moisture up into the uh, panhandle for uh, clouds and periods of rain, periods of light rain today, central and southern areas, a little more showery and drier conditions up to the north. And uh, showers off the North Gulf Coast, although some moisture streaming northward over the Eastern Copper River Basin, Wrangell Mountains, producing some light snow there. Uh, Chitina picked up maybe half an inch of snow or a quarter of an inch. So there's some light snow mounts going on over the Eastern Copper River Basin, especially over the mountainous terrain there. And uh, clouds over the central interior with areas of light snow from around Fairbanks on down into the uh, northern and eastern Cuscoom Valley areas, as well as back to the northwest coast with a continuing low pressure producing some light snow. Kivalina picking up an inch of snow in the last 12 hours there along the northwest coast down to uh, Shishmaref. And uh, Nome still a little bit of light snow going but only a quarter of an inch falling there in the last 12 hours. <clears throat> as well as uh, half an inch fell at Nanana and over at uh, Nikolai and McGrath during the same time period. So some areas of light snow but nothing heavy at all. Even lighter amounts, more of a flurry nature along the Arctic coast and North Slope. And uh, got some moisture moving into the uh, purple off, so that mass of clouds moving east. We're kind of breaking up frontal boundary there, really uh, not all that strong, kind of splitting apart there around the purple off, but holding together enough to turn the winds more westerly. Seeing uh, west winds gusting 25 to 35 miles an hour, 25 to 30 miles an hour there for the eastern Aleutians purple offs out of the west. And that, uh, brought warmer temperatures in, pushed the snow levels back above sea level, so rainfall falling there over the eastern Aleutians and the Perbolos today, pushing into the southwest coast. Very light amounts, as you can see that cloud mass really breaking up. Main front back to the west there, still west of the Perbolos, a little bit colder air behind that, so snowfall levels will come back down towards sea level when that pulls off to the east uh, late tonight and tomorrow. But a little bit of moisture in Nunavak Island, barely reaching the southwest coast today. A lot of clear skies though, Cuscoam Delta, and then you pick up along the coast there into Bristol Bay, and uh, gusty northwest winds as high as 45 miles an hour at Akiok there, southwest Kodiak Island, Sitkanak, gusty northwest winds, and uh, Iliamna seeing winds gusting to 32 miles an hour, and Seward had north winds at 32 miles an hour in gust today with clear skies, temperatures in the lower 40s, beautiful day there, a little breezy though, and some sunshine, uh, Prince William Sound, Valdez, into the upper 40s and some breaks there over the central Copper River Basin. And then the areas of light snow along the uh, Yukon River there to, toward Eagle and just to the north. And then a little more widespread there, as I mentioned, from Fairbanks and the Nana wrapping in or, and then southward along the west slopes of the Alaska Range there. Nikolai McGrath picking up some light snow. That tapering off, uh, you can see some breaks, some sunshine, Bristol Bay, and into the southern Cuscomb Valley. And then the light snow along the northwest coast, Kotzebue, Shishmaref, Buckland, and then even lighter amounts so for the uh, southern Seward Peninsula. And some showers along the Aleutians develop into rain with that frontal boundary farther out to the west. We'll see tonight that uh, pushes eastward. And again, winds turn more northwest, colder air behind that weak front. Uh, snowfall, look for the uh, precipitation to start to mix with snow again for the Pribilof Islands. That'll be late tonight as the main snow area stays back to the northwest. And then rain and snow southwest coast. Winds not much of a factor, maybe gusting 25, possibly 30 miles an hour. Places like Cape Newenham, Cape Hermansoff, Tuxuk Bay. And uh, 
Rain spreads over the Alaska Peninsula, pushing slowly eastward across uh, Bristol Bay throughout the night tonight. And that front drags across the Aleutians for periods of light rain the entire stretch of the Aleutian chain. Low pressure still off the uh, north coast of the Panhandle. That keeps southwest flow going. Several troughs rotating around that low center and surges of moisture uh, continue to uh, produce periods of light rain. Central and southern Panhandle scattered showers to the north and an area of light snow with weak low pressure over the uh, upper Yukon Valley there produces an area of light snow to the southwest down to about the uh, Alaska Range there tapering off ending over the Cuscombe Valley though and really tapering off of the western Alaska Range. Look for some clearing Kodiak Island, Southern Cook Inlet, South Central Alaska, Western Copper River Basin. Uh, uh, probably a night much like last night with uh, clear areas dropping colder than the cloudy areas, but most areas will drop below freezing. Western interior, same thing, light winds, Arctic coast, low clouds, fog, maybe some flurries over toward Barter Island, and some light snow chances continue for the northwest coast. And for tomorrow, same pattern, weak low now drifting up along the western Arctic coast. Uh, Cape uh, Lisburn Point Hope, best chance for some continuing light snow showers, probably dry from the Notak Valley down toward Kotzebue, most of the Seward Peninsula. Southwest interior, but that low uh, keeps a chance of rain and snow. Uh, southern Yukon Delta, Cuscombe Delta, Northern Bristol Bay, periods of rain, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, showers for the Eastern Aleutians, rain and snow showers for the Privilos. Look for the north winds to increase, northwest, maybe gusting 30, 35 miles an hour. Next system edging into the far western Aleutians and stays wet over the Panhandle. Periods of light rain continue with uh, light rain chances along the North Gulf Coast, snow showers, central interior. Outlook for Thursday. Looking at uh, less snow showers over the uh, eastern interior, but still a chance there around Eagle. Otherwise, uh, partly to mostly sunny conditions over much of interior Alaska and some flurries along the Arctic coast, northwest coast through the Bering Strait, light snow flurries and fog for St. Lawrence Island, and uh, rain and snow showers mostly over the southern Bering Sea, probably dry over the Aleutians, increasing northeast winds there right on the edge of that system to the south with the rain shield near Atka or just to the south of uh, Nikolsky. Um, looks like mostly missing the Aleutians at this point in time. Next front uh, developing over the Gulf of Alaska, poised to bring some more rain into the Panhandle later on, but uh, high pressure building over the western Aleutians. Moving on to lows tonight, uh, 35 to 45 for the Panhandle, single numbers in the Copper River Basin, otherwise teens and 20s, southern Alaska, Cuscombe Valley, lower 30s, Kodiak Island, 2025, Bristol Bay. High is Wednesday afternoon, mid 20s, Cuscombe Valley and uh, Copper River Basin, 30 to 40, South Central Alaska, mid 40s, Kodiak Island, 45 to 50 for the Panhandle. Followed by lows, still above freezing, well above freezing, lower 40s along the central coast of the Panhandle. Otherwise, uh, teens, Copper River Basin, Cuscombe Valley, Susitna Valley, 20s, Kenai Peninsula, mid 30s for Kodiak Island, lower to mid 20s for Bristol Bay, up and then highs on Thursday. 30 35 over the uh, interior, but 20s, Cuscombe Valley, mid 30s for Bristol Bay, lower 40s, Kodiak Island, in the 40s for the southeast coast, up to the north. Single numbers and teens, 5 to 15 for the lows tonight, Brooks Range out to the Arctic coast, and 15 to 20 for the uh, central interior, out to the Seward Peninsula, lower 20s, St. Lawrence Island. Highs tomorrow in the 20s, south of the Brooks Range, teens and 20s, north of the mountains, out to the Arctic coast, followed by lows. 5 to 15 again over much of the interior there, all the way out to the Arctic coast near 20 for the coastal areas of the Seward Peninsula and the Bering Strait. Highs in the 20s south of the Brooks Range, 15 to 20 for the Brooks Range and North Slope and 20 to 25 for the Arctic coast. And out to the southwest, uh, lows 35 to 40 near freezing for the Pribilofs and highs. Lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, mid 40s Central Aleutians, upper 30s for the Privilofs, followed by lows in the upper 20s for St. Paul and St. George, otherwise 30 to 35 for the Aleutians, and then highs, upper 30s to lower 40s. Grant Smith here with the National Weather Service here in Juneau, Alaska, just to give you a quick uh, overall look at the uh, next several days here in uh, the Panhandle. What we're looking at is continued uh, rainy, showery pattern uh, through Friday, uh, where highs will generally be in the 40s. Now, the lows is actually where we're going to be seeing some changes. We're going to start off uh, with lows in the 40s to 30s, but by the time we get to Friday night, we're looking at lows in the 30s and 20s. The farther north you are, that's where you have a better chance to see those colder lows. Just a quick side note about Thursday night, though. Some incoming cold air may be just cold enough to actually support snow uh, at sea level for parts of the central and northern inner channels, so be on the lookout for that. 
And then this weekend, we've got increasing confidence for a high pressure over the panhandle. And this kind of pattern would bring drier and warmer weather, which is looking great for those trick or treaters out there this weekend. For the National Weather Service here in Juneau, Alaska, I'm meteorologist Grant Smith. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic, got some IFR eastern Arctic coast down across eastern Brooks Range and then southwestward across the Yukon Flats, right on down into the uh, Tanana Valley. Western interior VFR, then more IFR making landfall along the southwest coast, pushing into the southern Cuscombe Valley, extending down across Bristol Bay to the Aleutian Range. Marginal VFR, southwest Kodiak Island. VFR for the Pribilofs, all of the Aleutians. IFR for the southern Panhandle. And for the afternoon Wednesday, IFR uh, covering all the North Slope and Arctic coast, south into the Yukon Flats. Marginal VFR from, uh, say, Fort Yukon southward to Prince William Sound, Copper River Basin. Maybe the eastern Manuska Valley, uh, northern Susitna Valley possibly. IFR northern Panhandle, marginal VFR southern southeast coast, marginal for Yakutat. Otherwise, the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet Kenai Peninsula on up to Norton Sound, all VFR, VFR, Alaska Peninsula, Central Eastern Aleutians, lowering conditions, the uh, marginal VFR pushes into Shimiana 2, possibly Kiska in the afternoon, marginal for the Pribloffs to St. Lawrence Island of the Bering Strait. Thursday morning, IFR, Arctic Coast, marginal VFR for the North Slope, uh, Eastern Alaska Range, all the way down to the North Gulf Coast, Gulf of Alaska, Panhandle, all marginal VFR, some IFR thrown in. Uh, Central Eastern Copper River Basin on up across the 40 mile country to, uh, well, actually north of Eagle and a little bit there, southeastern portion of the southeast coast. Some IFR really on the lake uh, down to about King Salmon, northeast Bristol Bay, and IFR West Central Aleutians, VFR with Mac Island. And for the afternoon Thursday, VFR from ADAC westward to Shimianatu and pushing into the Pribilofs and across the Alaska Peninsula. Some IFR just grazing the eastern Aleutians there. <coughs> Marginal VFR now, Bristol Bay, southern, Cus or s southern central Cuscombe Valley from the Cuscombe Mountains there eastward across southern Cook Inlet. Uh, Kenai Soldatna right on the northern edge there. Turnigan Arm just north of the marginal VFR zone. Some IFR though for northern Prince William Sound. And parts of the Copper River Basin, marginal VFR. Good VFR along the uh, central and lower Yukon River Valley right out to Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, up across the Brooks Range North Slope VFR, marginal VFR northeast part of the state. And for the Panhandle, except Prince of Wales Island becoming VFR. Passes Anatovic and Adigan, both uh, mostly IFR throughout the day on Wednesday. And uh, VFR though for Lake Clark, Merrill, Rainy, all looking good for the Western Alaska Range. And we run into some possible marginal VFR for Windy Pass. Also for Isabel, marginal VFR, Mentasta, occasional marginal conditions tomorrow. And for Tanita, possible marginal VFR eastern entrance, otherwise a VFR kind of day there. And for Portage, Optimistically, VFR, either approach, best chance of lower conditions or marginal VFR be the eastern entrance. Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR becoming IFR. And for the freezing levels, 2,000 feet there over the Aleutians, right along the Aleutians and eastern North Gulf Coast, northern Panhandle. And at the surface there, right near Nunavak Island, well north of the Pribilofs, down across uh, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, North Gulf Coast, and southeastward across the Panhandle. Three zones of icing, one in over the southeast coast of uh, possible, some small areas, considerable moderate rime or mixed icing there. Isolated moderate with a batch over the southeast Bering Sea into Bristol Bay in the southwest interior of that system. And the next zone, uh, just southwest of the western Aleutians, that'll just be grazing the central Aleutians late Wednesday night and into Thursday. And the jet stream, northwest flow, 130 knots right across the wet east central Aleutians there. And uh, trough along the west coast there, up into the Russian far east. South flow only 30 to 35 knots, and then the main jet south of the panhandle. 9,000 feet uh, northwest, 40 to 45 knots there across central Aleutians, eastern Aleutians as well. And light winds over the interior, southwest, 40 to 45 knots across the panhandle. 
And at uh, 3,000 feet, southeast coast, southwest flow with that low near Yakutat, uh, 40 to 45 knots. They're mostly along and off the coast. Northwest 50, they're near the Perbilofs. And as far as icing, or as far as turbulence goes, look for considerable moderate below 6,000 feet for the Panhandle, also below 5,000 feet for the Western Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians to about Atka, St. Paul, St. George, mostly moderate turbulence there, smooth over interior Alaska. After the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. And joining us today, two more people to talk about the augmented reality sandbox. It's Alana Velaji. She's a University of Alaska Fairbanks mechanical engineering student, helped design and work on the details to make this new type of sandbox there. Thanks for joining us, Alana. <laughs> and Courtney Breest, she's the outreach coordinator for EPSCOR, which is the experimental program to stimulate mm -hmm. competitive research. It's a, a program funded nationally by the National Science Foundation, right? Yes. Okay. Alana, tell us about how you changed and adapted this version of the augmented reality sandbox. It's a really cool tool. So, Gina approached us with three goals for this new version of the sandbox. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be compact mm -hmm. in a light system that could travel around the state. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be child-oriented, okay. so we designed the sandbox to have three different levels. Okay. It's pretty cool. You can yeah. have younger children. You can have high school kids. Uh -huh. um, I guess I should say high school teenagers. Sure. <laughs> and then we also designed it to be more marketable, user friendly, so that this could be seen eventually in classrooms all over the place, all over the state. Okay. And you had a big hand in this, but this was a team approach, right? Definitely. It was a really good experience for myself, for George Stevens, who we'll see later. One of our hand models today. Yeah. For um, two other members who aren't here today, Cody Klingman and Austin Hunt. Uh -huh. And um, it was just a really good learning experience all around. Very good. And this is something that is part of your learning experience as well. So you get to check a box in your education. Yeah, right? it's a requirement for um, seniors of mechanical engineering at uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. Very good. Very good. Well, it is a, is a wonderfully uh, inquisitive tool, fun to play with, and I hope to get my hands in the sand here in just a little bit. But it's also part of a bigger program, something that we were talking about a moment ago, EPSCOR, and that's what Courtney is here uh, to tell us more about. What is EPSCOR and why do you need a sandbox? Well, EPSCOR, as you mentioned, is a national uh, program. Mm -hmm. We're funded nationally, but we're actually located statewide. We're at UAF, we're mm -hmm. at UAA, we're in Southeast at UAS and she mentioned you know taking the sandbox as an educational tool and that's where our, I'm an outreach coordinator for the South Central test case. Okay. Our focus is on the Kenai watershed mm -hmm. and we are really interested in using these tools like the sandbox to interact with the students down there and get them interested in STEM and also communicate the research findings that we've been having throughout the state. Okay. And one of those, as uh, George and Eric are kind of changing the contours for us there from UAF to uh, maybe something that <laughs> resembles a little bit of something uh, more of the Kenai watershed, which is one of your focuses for the study, right? And, and specifically looking at some of the changes there and how that impacts people and also the salmon. Yes, it is a, all of our research is social mm -hmm. and environmental. Okay. So we have social scientists working hand in hand with our environmental scientists. One of the things we're studying is Upper Russian Lake, mm -hmm. and we have a researcher taking sediment cores from that lake. So one of the things we're going to use the sandbox to communicate is how the landscape changed over a long period of time, thousands of years, going from glacier, covered by glacier ice, mm -hmm. to being filled with water. And, then and that's what they're doing right now, exactly. So live. They're, <laughs> exactly. So, so they're cool. moving the water around. And then I think they've got some props over there because we're also going to go a little bit more in depth and explain how the salmon got there. Okay. So using there's these... There's the salmon. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I think there's a few more. <laughs> yeah, we so. like more salmon in Alaska. More salmon. Yeah, exactly. So it's really taking the findings from our research grant and just trying to connect with the community and translate it in a really hands-on and mm -hmm. exciting way so people can you know, interact with us as much as possible. Well, sure, that, that makes the learning and the science real and, and quite literally in your face rather than just some boring black and white paper that you have to read about. This is something that people can understand better because it's visual and they're touching and feeling and seeing these changes, right? Yeah, and get them engaged. And mm -hmm. then uh, outreach is a huge component and working with the younger students and actually even, I mean, working with the UAF graduate mm -hmm. and uh, engineering students is it's a huge part of our 
grant and our, we really enjoy it. Oh, it is wonderfully exciting. And so, Alana, you were telling us that this is built to travel. Right. And this is built to do more things in version one. Where can this type of project go in Alaska? And what can it demonstrate? I mean, we were hoping to eventually get to villages that were harder to reach, mm -hmm. um, that you couldn't necessarily move a whole fixed instrument to, right? right? You need something that can pack up, fit in your truck bed. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, one of the, the most attractive parts of this project is that this was going to be something that was used past our, our graduation point. You know, this okay. is going to some, be something that lives in the state for years. Right, right. Well, it looks like you're well on your way with that. So what are, uh, give me another example. What else can this show us? We've talked about the, the Kenai River watershed. What's the coolest thing that you've played in the sand with? What, what's your idea? Well, I definitely enjoy the props, but we also like kind of building up a giant mound and uh, if you put some water behind it, you can make a, a little uh, runway, I guess, and okay. you know, demonstrate the effects of the hydrology by just letting, kind of putting up a dam and letting it all pour right down. Okay. And so that could, I think you mentioned it earlier, you could even demonstrate the effects of a tsunami right. or okay. something along those lines. So it's not just topography, but it's also hydrology yes. and coastal surge mapping and some of the coastal changes that we're seeing here in Alaska and seeing what the smaller changes in the sandbox might do to kind of a real effect of a slosh or a push of water up on the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, tsunami inundation mapping or even glacial dam release as, as some uh, has been demonstrated before. Yep. So oh, wow, that's, you know, that's just an impressive thing. That it seems like the possibilities are nearly endless with this and probably even more ideas that are popping up in your head too. Yeah, as we speak. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, if folks want to get more information about EPSCOR, uh, you guys are online. You're on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Uh, A-K-E-P-S-C-O-R, right? EPSCOR. Uh, Alaska EPSCOR, that is. Mm -hmm. And again, you guys are funded by the National Science Foundation. Yes, so sir. more to come from that and a, and a longer term study there. Thank you, ladies, uh, for joining us today. Uh, congratulations on your hard work there. This is really fun. And uh, for now, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder uh, with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and I'm going to go play in the sandbox there. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Day continuing to uh, close off at thin ice, the zone of thinner ice there. Uh, north of the Barrier Islands, eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, continuing to narrow as ice expands outward from the shore and moves southward from the Arctic there. And uh, pattern expected to continue for the next uh, several days with winds becoming light later in the forecast area about four or five days out. And also look for ice edge over the Beauforts, or I'm sorry, the uh, Chukchi Sea to expand south and southwest up to 25 to 30 nautical miles. From there, going to, uh, let's see, coastal water forecasts looking like this for the southeast coast. On Wednesday, gale warnings on the south coast, southwest winds 35 knots, seas just under 20 feet. Small craft advisories, central and north coast for southwest winds 20 to 30 knots, seas 10 to 17 feet. And Clarence Strait, small craft advisory, south winds 25 knots with 13 foot seas, but only 10 knot south winds for Stevens Passage with slight seas north at 15 for Lynn Canal with seas at three feet. And for Thursday, south to, or southeast winds, 15 knots, central and southern inner channels, three foot seas, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, south at 20. And uh, along the coast, Prince of Wales Island, southwest winds, 20 knots, small craft advisories for the central and north coast or south to southeast winds, 25 to 30 knots, seas around 12 feet. Prince William Sound, northeast winds, 20 knots, seas three feet for the day Wednesday and small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast. East northeasterlies at 25 knots, seas at about eight feet. Small craft advisories also for Kamishak Bay, west winds 30 knots, turn northwest at 30 knots. For the Barren Islands, Cook Inlet, north to northwest, 10 to 15 knots. And for Cook Inlet on Thursday, north of the Forelands, north winds at 20 knots with small craft advisories south of the Forelands for 25 knot northeast winds, turn north at 25 knots for Kamishak Bay. Southwest 20 for the Barren Islands, south winds 20 knots for the western North Gulf Coast, small craft advisories eastern North Gulf Coast there for southerlies 25 to 30 knots, seas 8 to 10 feet, east 25 knots for Prince William Sound, good for a small craft advisory for the day Thursday. And for Kodiak Island, westerlies 20 to 25 knots for the day Wednesday, 
and gale warnings for the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. West winds 40 knots, seas 15 feet, and from Cape Sarachev to Sitkanak, look for west southwest winds at 30 knots, Bristol Bay southwest at 25 with 7 foot seas. Bristol Bay on Thursday, lighter winds from the northwest to 15 knots. Small craft advisories, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. Gale warnings now on the Pacific side of the peninsula from Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape for west winds at 25 knots. Small craft advisories, west winds 30 knots, Castle Cape to Sitkanak and up the east side of Kodiak Island, winds will be southwest at 20 knots with 10 foot seas. Fox Islands tomorrow, west winds 30 to 35 knots. Sadak and Atka, west northwest winds 30 knots. And 30 knot winds from the west for Amchitka Island, Kiska, Shimi and Attu, southeast of 15, light winds. But uh, up to gales on Thursday from Shimi to Kiska, northwest at 40. Amchitka Island north at 45 knots, and gale warnings also for the uh, central Aleutians, north to northeast winds, Adak and Atka, 40 to 45 knots. Gale warnings for the Fox Islands, Unimak Island, northeast winds, 40 to 45 knots, north to northeast winds for Alaska Island, 35 to 40 knots, seas around 13 feet. Southwest coast, uh, Yukon Delta coast, north at 30 tomorrow, seas 10 feet. St. Lawrence Island looking at lighter winds, north at 20. But gale warnings for St. Matthew Island, north winds 35 knots and almost a storm warning, but not quite. Northwest winds for, at 45 knots for St. Paul, St. George Island, seas at about 20 feet. Outlook for Thursday. For the southwest coast, north to northwest winds 20 knots, light north at winds at 15 knots, St. Lawrence Island, small craft advisories for the Pribilofs, northwest winds 25 knots, Norton Sound, northeast to 10, St. Matthew Island, northwest at 20. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast for tomorrow, north to northeast winds at 10 knots, light and variable winds on the central coast, south winds 15 knots, western Arctic coast, all the way down to Wales. And for Thursday, northwest winds 15 knots, whales up to Cape Beaufort, and for the central and eastern Arctic coast, uh, east winds at 10 knots, lighter and more variable toward demarcation point. For tonight, system brings uh, rain and snow into the southwest coast, rain spreading across Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, all of the Aleutians, and uh, Rain over the southern panhandle, showers in the north, areas of light snow over the eastern interior, Tanaw Valley, Yukon Valley, up to the eastern Brooks Range. And for tomorrow, Wednesday, still an area of light snow showers in the central interior, eastern Arctic coast, and through the Bering Strait, and low pressure, unsettled conditions for the uh, southwest coast, and rain for the north Gulf Coast on Thursday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.